Welcome to worship with the community of St. Mark's Lutheran Church by the Narrows. On this fifth Sunday in the season of Easter, our gospel reading actually takes us back to the night before Jesus' death and to his last words of instructions to his disciples. Jesus knows that Judas will betray him and that Peter will deny him, but this does not cause Jesus to, to use this last time with his disciples to declare judgment. Instead, Jesus uses those precious moments, as we'll hear, to call them all into love. Love one another as I have loved you, Jesus says to them. And we'll dwell in those words throughout our worship service today. We'll also dwell in the promise that the God who makes all things new will give us the power to love in ways that we have not yet even imagined. So holding that promise, we begin now with this opening song. of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Gracious God, you teach us that without love our actions gain nothing. Pour into our hearts your most excellent gift of love, that made alive by your Spirit we may know goodness and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today's first reading comes from the book of Acts, the 11th chapter. Now the apostles and the believers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him, saying, Why do you go to uncircumcised men and eat with them? Then Peter began to explain it to them, step by step saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. There was something like a large sheet coming down from heaven, being lowered by its four corners, and it came close to me. As I looked at it closely, I saw four-footed animals, beasts of prey, reptiles, and birds of the air. I also heard a voice saying to me, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. But I replied, By no means, Lord, for nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time the voice answered from heaven, What God has made clean, 
you must not call profane. This happened three times. Then everything was pulled up again to heaven. At that very moment, three men sent to me from Caesarea arrived at the house where we were. The Spirit told me to go with them and to not make a distinction between them and us. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen the angel standing in his house, saying, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will give you a message by which you and your entire household will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, just as it had upon us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift that God gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could hinder God? When they heard this, they were silenced. And they praised God, saying, Then God has given even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. Our second reading comes from the book of Revelations, the 21st chapter. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. God will dwell with them as their God. They will be God's people, and that very God will be with them and will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. And also said, Write this. For these words are trustworthy and true. Then the one seated on the throne said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel for this fifth Sunday in Easter is found in the Gospel according to St. John, the 13th chapter, beginning with the 31st verse. When Judas had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in God's self, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. If the story of Peter ended in the New Testament Gospels, I don't think any of us could picture a time when he would be accused of being too open and welcoming. In spite of Peter's eagerness and zeal to follow Jesus, the Gospels show us a person who is constantly struggling, as we do, with the expansive nature of Jesus' vision. In fact, Peter is often the one who challenges Jesus when he thinks that Jesus is stepping out of bounds. On one occasion, Peter even took Jesus aside and rebuked him, just like the others do with Peter in our first reading today from the book of Acts. Why did you go to uncircumcised men and eat with them, they say to Peter? In other words, why did you step out of bounds and break the social rules that were made to keep us together? It's quite remarkable, really. And it leads us to ask, how did this happen? How did the roles get reversed? 
How did Peter become the edgy one who was making others nervous? Peter's short answer to that is just four words. I saw a vision. That actually makes sense because you and I know from experience that vision is often the source of radical change. Without it, things stay as they have always been. Or worse yet, as it says in the Old Testament, without vision, the people perish. Without vision, people remain locked in a way of life that's more concerned with self-preservation than with growth and renewal and change. That was Peter in many of the gospel stories we read. But now things are different because he has seen a vision. The trouble is vision often threatens old structures, structures that bring security and identity to many people, especially those people who hold down the stakes of any tent that a community has raised. They are the ones who make sure that the tent is secure and that it can withstand any elements or changes, no matter how severe they may be. So when someone says, I see a bigger tent, the anxiety level starts to rise because making a bigger tent means taking up the stakes, moving them. It means giving ground and creating space for the unknown. Certainly that does describe a great deal of the conflict that Jesus experienced in his brief ministry. His vision of a bigger tent for God's people made stakeholders all feel anxious and upset. Creating new space for those on the outside meant pulling up stakes and relocating them. And that was something that very few people wanted to do. Even Peter, it seemed, liked the stakes where they were put. And he fought to keep them there until he saw a vision. Peter may have lingered in that mystical moment, pondering what all of that strange imagery meant in his vision. But three strangers abruptly arrived at his house and Peter saw the connection. Normally, he would have drawn clear lines at that point, lines of distinction between himself and these outsiders. But his vision now guided him in a new direction. Up came the stakes and into that bigger tent came these three Gentiles along with the leader of the enemy army who was in need of God's healing touch. When pressed to explain himself, Peter simply said, the Spirit told me to go with them and not to make a distinction between them and us. I have to say that's my favorite line in the story because it points us to something of ultimate importance. It shows us that Peter didn't just see a bigger tent, but a bigger tent where people related to each other in totally new ways. Several years ago, I had the opportunity to hear a compelling speech about vision by John Wilson, who was at the time president of Morehouse College in Atlanta. Morehouse is one of the many distinguished historically black colleges and universities in our country. And it has a long history of leading with vision. Speaking about what is needed most, President Wilson said that what we really need to have is gut level vision. He told me later that he had actually never used that phrase before. And I told him how grateful I was for it. In the Greek language of the New Testament, the word for guts is also the root of the verb associated with compassion. So when gospel writers say, for example, that Jesus was moved with compassion, they use a word which literally describes a gut level response. In that light, when President Wilson spoke about gut level vision, my thoughts went immediately to the image of vision linked with compassion. And that struck me as the best possible description of the God-given vision that we hear about in the Bible. 
In Peter's case, it was a vision of a bigger tent where diverse people actually cared for each other and reached out to heal each other with the power given to them by God. I think that's also the best way to describe Jesus' vision of new community that we hear in our gospel reading today. I'm with you only a little while longer, Jesus says to his followers. But in the future, the distinguishing mark of your life together will be mutual love for one another. Jesus could have envisioned great cathedrals and powerful institutions and believers throughout the world coming together to form faith communities. But I think he knew that all of that would be meaningless if the people gathered were not living together in love. So he gave a new commandment to go along with the vision. Just as I have loved you, you should also love one another. We heard a stirring reminder of that this week when Willie Stewart spoke to our St. Mark's Anti-Racism Alliance on Monday night. Stewart is a longtime leader and practitioner of racial reconciliation in our city who was recently awarded the Greater Tacoma Peace Prize. In his summary of what matters most for us in community, Stewart said, we need to stand up and live the principles of Christianity if we call ourselves Christian. And it's all in one word, love. Throughout his talk with us about our community history, Willie Stewart also called attention to the transformation that takes place when any person is given a vision for a bigger tent where diverse people care for each other in loving ways. In one case, he said it was the transformation that occurred when a school superintendent named Angelo Giadroni had a vision in the 1960s for a much more diverse community of administrators and teachers in our Tacoma School District. Acting on that vision, Giadroni sent Willie and Trigvi Blix across the country to visit historically black colleges and universities in order to recruit strong candidates. And then, taking it to the next step, as Stewart says, Giadroni had the vision to appoint many of them to high-level positions in our school district. But Stewart also celebrated the vision of common people whose names are most likely forgotten. Like the woman who chastised every person in her neighborhood when they refused to welcome Stuart as the first black person to live among them. Because of her vision and that time of racial redlining in our city, she was like the prophets in Hebrew scripture who speak God's word of judgment in a way that calls for radical change. And as Stuart said, that one person with vision made all the difference. In many ways, she was also like the New Testament prophet whose vision of a new heaven and a new earth is recorded in our reading from Revelation today. The first heaven and the first earth had passed away, the prophet says, and a new Jerusalem was coming down out of heaven from God. It might seem easy to welcome that vision of a new Jerusalem when we hear it today. But I wouldn't suggest doing that without a clear acknowledgement of what it means for us because new vision does indeed threaten old structures, structures that bring many of us our sense of security and identity. And in every case, making a bigger tent does mean taking up stakes and moving them. It does mean giving up ground, creating space, for the unknown. I can understand if any of us feel that we are incapable of doing that, especially when it goes against so much of what we have built our lives upon. But that does not have to be where our story ends. What if our unfolding story includes the possibility that we, like Peter, could one day be accused of being too open and inclusive? 
What if it includes the possibility that we, like him, will actually abandon the old ways that guard our safety and become the edgy disciples of Jesus who make others nervous? That's a vision I pray for. Because where there is vision, there is also the Spirit of God at work in ways that can transform vision into reality. And in that hope, I say, thanks be to God. Amen. so great Jesus in all things I've seen a glimpse of your heart a billion years still I be seen how can I praise you enough how can I praise you enough you are the Lord Almighty Outshining all the stars in glory Your love is like the wildest ocean Oh, nothing else compares Creation calls all to the Savior We are alive for your praise In earth and sky No one is higher In our gospel reading, Jesus says, not only love one another, but love one another as I have loved you. For us, that is the heart of it as we come to a time of confession, because we know that Jesus does not ask us to do something that is not already in the heart of God, this deep love and acceptance and welcome. So we can trust that as we come before God now to confess our sin, God hears that in a spirit of love and forgiveness. We take a few moments now, wherever we are, to be aware of what it is that we bring to God that has separated us from one another and from God and from our true selves.
in the great love of God, Jesus Christ is given for us, and in him we have the forgiveness of all our sin. That is the promise of the gospel that I declare to you, that your sins are forgiven. In the name of God, our Creator, Christ, our Savior, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we move into this time of prayer now, your response after each prayer petition is, your mercy is great. Let us pray. Loving God, lead us to follow your spirit rather than our own prejudices or desires as the church cares for one another. Open us to receive your gifts in those we least expect. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Place holy love, O God, at the center of all our relationships and communities. By your love, heal us, convict us, and renew us. Bring an end to racism in our churches and communities. Let everyone know your goodness by the love we show one another. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Inspire us to praise you through the beauty and majesty of the natural world around us, including the Puyallup River watershed and all the life it sustains. Urge us and convict us by your spirit toward more deliberate care of the world that you have made in love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Sovereign God, humble the rulers of nations before your splendor. Direct them to the people who need their attention most and turn them from the temptation to hoard wealth or power. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Compassionate God, hasten to dwell among those who look to you for healing and strength in body, mind, or spirit. We pray especially for Bill Krabler, Elaine Rodning, Jean Marble, Catherine Cummings and Connie Brown, Vic and Barb Holm, and for Ivor and Ginny Haugen as they transition to a new dwelling place. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Consoling God, be present with Derek Smith and family as they mourn the loss of Derek's mother. Surround them with your peace and with blessed memories of the life they were given to share together. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, amen. We affirm now our faith together with these words. We believe in the Creator who gave birth to the universe, set solar systems dancing in space, shaped molecules and mountains, and conceived beauty beyond our imagining. We believe in Jesus, born in obscurity in an occupied land, a human being vulnerable to hunger, thirst, persecution, and grief. He understood the power of love and confronted the powers of evil, spoke the truth with courage and clarity, forgave his enemies, and changed lives. In his living, dying, and rising again, he showed love strong enough to save the world. We believe in the Holy Spirit who sustains, comforts, and empowers us, opens the scriptures, opens our minds, and illuminates earth's darkness. Amen. The peace of God be with all of you. You're welcome at this time to share God's peace with any who may be with you or that you're able to reach out to either online or in other ways, remembering the unity that we share in Christ. Each week we are reminded of all of the ways in which your gifts are a sign of God's generosity. And we thank you for all of the ways in which you are a part of ministry of our congregation, both in the ways that you are just living out your faith in daily life, but also the things that we are able to do together including the offering of gifts, that monetary gifts that strengthen our ministry. We are getting close to the time now where we'll, our church council will bring forth a budget to the congregation for our congregational meeting on June 12th. And so we're still looking to anyone who is, uh, hasn't turned in a plan for giving. 
Uh, we notice that there are quite a few people who have done that in previous years who um, are still uh, waiting to send those in and that would make a big difference right now. So if that's uh, uh, your story, then know that it'll make a difference if you are able to still do that either online on our website at the, at the Give tab. There's a place where you can do an online plan for giving or we always have extra copies at church at the Narthex. We gather now at this open table of grace where all are welcome remembering God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, you have brought us this far along the way. In times of bitterness, you did not abandon us, but guided us into the path of love and light. In every age, you have sent prophets to make known your loving will for all humanity. The cry of the poor has become your own cry. Our hunger and thirst for justice is your own desire. And in the fullness of time, you sent your chosen servant, Jesus, to call us all into your love. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and gave thanks. He blessed it and broke it and gave it to his followers, saying to them, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he offered it to them, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this to remember me. We pray together as Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. If you have bread and wine or grape juice in your place of worship, you're welcome to receive those now and to share them with anyone who might be gathered with you. If you are alone as you worship now, know that you are a part of this communion of saints that is gathered. And as you receive these gifts, we remember the words, the body of Christ given for you, and the blood of Christ shed for you. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us, mercy on us, mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us, mercy on us, mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. May the body and the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you now and keep you in his grace from this day forth and forever. Amen. When peace like a river attendeth my way When sorrows like sea
the sky, not the grave, is our The trunk.